Well, listeners, welcome back. And of course, as you know, we have been playing the brand new track from Sonic Universe on our show. And now there is a second single that has just been released called Higher. This is, of course, before the brand new album comes out on May 10th. And today we thought we would actually get Corey Glover from the band on the phone to chat about this amazing new album and this amazing new single. Welcome to the program, Corey. Hi, good. Nice to meet you. Corey, we are so excited about this album coming out, of course. Hearing this second single, it's just, this music is so special. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you feel about this music that you're releasing right now and this album that's coming out on May 10th. Well, I'm very excited about it. It's a, it's a really, really good record. Um, I, 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 it's better than my expectations, actually. Um, I... I Mike Orlando is incredible. I think this is one of the best work I've ever, I think I've heard of Mike's personally. So tell us a little bit about your relationship with Mike. When did your relationship with Mike begin? Um, well, we were, <clears throat> we met on the uh, Ship Rock cruise <clears throat> and uh, I saw him play. And I was blown away by it. And we and, and we met on the boat, and we struck up a friendship. And a couple of months later, we I went to his studio, to, and we worked on a few songs. And the song sound is pretty good. And we kept going until we figured out we actually made an album. So, what was that journey like for you? Tell us a little bit uh, about that, like forming a brand new band and working on new music. That was that a pretty exciting time for you. It wasn't exciting. I don't think I would was the word I'd use for it. I, I thought it held a lot of possibilities. Yeah, it could be so many things. It could have been just a project band, and where it just sort of stays in the studio, and we just kept writing and recording and writing, and recording. Some something might have come out of it. It could have been some stuff that he could have used for Adrenaline Mob or his other projects. I could have used for Living Color or something else. But it sounded really, really compelling, and it really needed to be, we felt like it needed to be heard. The the tracks that we're hearing coming out of the band, they, they've got such powerful messages uh, with them. Was that something that you talked about when you first sat down to work on the music with Mike? Did you, did you talk about what kind of themes and, and what kind of things you wanted to explore with these tracks? I think we had we came to the table with what we had, you know, what, you know, what Mike does musically and what I do musically is sort of like lent itself to, it lent itself to making this kind of music and this kind of thing. And he had really good ideas and I think I had really good ideas and they sort of gelled. It came together and it worked. So tell us a little bit about this second single higher. What kind of things were, inspiring you especially lyrically when you sat down to work on higher you know when when mike played the tune played the music for it i was he was like and he was saying he wanted this to be sort of like a gospel sort of thing and that sort of was my inspiration for writing lyrics for it and, and having something that was somewhat inspirational and, and that's how it came about basically we live in a time where so many people are frustrated at the things that are going on around them in the world, and we see some terrible things happening in the world. As a musician, do you, do you realize just how a track like this can can change a day for somebody, or or make them suddenly feel better about their life? I would hope it does. Yeah. I, I would hope that that you hear a song like this and know that there's people out there that feel like who are rooting for you. You know that are that have your best interest at heart more so than somebody who's trying to bring you down. Yeah, have you had many people over the years come up to you and and talk to you about the power that your music has had on their lives? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, not for nothing. I've been doing this for a very long time, and people are, you know, for whatever reason they they've heard particular things they've heard music that I, I, I've done, they've heard words that I've said, and, and I'm glad to be here for that. That's, what, that's part of why, part of my job. 
Yeah. So taking it back to the creation of Sonic Universe, after Mike and you started to work on the music, how did you go about bringing in the the other musicians that we hear on the so- um, Sonic Universe's album? How did you go about bringing them in, and how did you know which were the musicians that you wanted to work with on this project? Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of Taekwon's band's Sworn Enemy. And I know a little bit about Taekwon. I know his, his mother is a preacher. And, I, and so he comes out of that sort of like gospel thing. So a song like Higher worked perfectly for him. Uh, Booker I've known forever. Booker was in my solo band in Vice when I made put out my solo records. And I knew he knew them. I knew he'd get it and he'd be really good on it. So it's it, it wasn't a matter of it wasn't it was, that was a no brainer basically. It's like look for people who who have an, who have the chops to do what we're what we're attempting at doing, and who have the sensibilities, and both of them do. You mentioned Taquan's gospel background there. When you first started to talk about what you wanted this band to sound like, what kind of things were being thrown around because you hear so much in this album there's rock there's funk there's um gospel as you've just mentioned what kind of sounds were you hoping to try and and get with sonic universe i was hoping that all of the all that there is in music would be in the people who played it and i would hope that people people that we tasked with playing it would feel the inspiration for where the songs were going and how the songs were going, how the songs were going to build and, and and be more creative as it goes along. So it was you look for somebody who knows who has an op- and who's open to anything and those and, and all of us are open to just about anything coming that down our way. Talking of inspiration, what was that like when you all first walked into the studio together to work on this? Was was that something kind of special? Oh yeah, but you know, the way we kind of did this was that it was basically first me and Mike doing well, making this, doing the demos, and, <clears throat> and then bring Booker and, and Taekwon in to do their thing, and they took to it really, really well. And every time, every time somebody brought something new, or some, every time somebody did their did their bit, it just got better. Yep. So for all the listeners out there that, that haven't had the opportunity to listen to more of this album, tell us a little bit about what we can expect to hear on the rest of this album after listening to these two singles. Well, you know, basically it's, you know, it's the combination of, you know, the heaviness of what Mike Orlando brings to the table and, you know, what I bring to Living Color in the, in one big one giant package and if you like those two things i'm think sure you'll have a good time so what are your plans after the album comes out what are your hopes for sonic universe can we expect to see you guys do some shows or um are you starting to work on new music already what's the plan after may 10th well, my schedule is so full right now um i got more i have more living color stuff to do over the next four months, and then, um, and we're gonna we're gonna do some one or two promotional shows, uh, pretty soon, like in April or May, and and then I don't think we're gonna probably go on the road probably in the like in November or December. Okay, awesome. So I also wanted to talk to you about the video clip for this one as well. You've been working with Tom Flynn on these video clips, and he does an absolutely yeah. amazing job. What is it like working with Tom, and how much creative input do you get into these um, video clips as well? Oh, he's amazing. Tom is is, is brilliant, and and in, in the way that he sort of takes the music. In and sort of ma- and kinetically sort of makes it work, and he was very open to our suggestions and to us to do try to do different things, try different camera angles and that kind of stuff. It was amazing, and we had a great time doing it. Awesome, well, Corey. I know we are running out of time very very quickly, so before I go, I just wanted to ask. 
What would you like to say to your fans out there? We're about to play higher for the first time on our show. What would you like to say to them um, before they listen to the single and also before they go out and grab the album on May 10th? You know, you're in for a very, very, very good time. And as far as listening to higher, I have a friend. Uh, where are you exactly in Australia? Um, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Yep. Okay, well, I have a friend in Perth that I think this song is great would be great for her. This is for Natalie. 